thanks for the blood. <laughs> the blood of Calvary. Thanks for the blood. The blood that sets me free. <laughs> thanks for the blood. Thank you for your love. Thank you, Father, for Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for bleeding. Thank you, Spirit, for leading me to the... Thank you for your blood. The blood of Calvary. Thanks for the blood. The blood that sets me free. Thanks for the blood. Thank you for your love. Come on. Thank you, Father, for Jesus. Thank you for bleeding. Thank you for leading me. Come on to the cross one more time. Thanks for the blood. The blood of Cal. Thank you for your blood. The blood that sets me free. Thanks for the blood. Thank you for your love. Oh, thank you, Father, for Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for bleeding. Thank you, Spirit, for leading me to. Come on, while we're celebrating the blood, let's get ready to give. Praise God. Those of you that are giving electronically, we thank you so much for your support to the house of God. Cathedral family, you are amazing. You are just amazing. You have been so faithful to support the house. Amen. Electronically, even in your absence, it's been amazing. And please continue. Please, thank you so much. You can go to our website, www.gotellit.org. Hit that donate button. Or you can do paypal.me forward slash HG Cathedral. Or you can go to Cash App. And that's HGFG Cathedral. God bless you as you give. Those are giving in the house, just go ahead and walk up to the altar. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Thanks for the blood. The blood of cow. Thank you for your blood. The blood that sets. Thank you for your blood. Thank you for your love. Oh, thank you, Father, for Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for bleeding. Thank you, Spirit, for leading me to come on one more time. Thank you for your blood, Jesus. The blood of Calvary. Thanks for the blood. The blood that sets me for thanks for the blood. Thank you for your love. Thank you, Father, for Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for bleeding. Thank you, Spirit, for leading me to come on. Thank you, Father. Come on. Thank you, Father, for Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for bleeding. Thank you, Spirit, for leading me. I dare you to do it one more time. Come on. Thank you. Thank you, Father, for Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just for bleeding. Thank you, Spirit, for leading me. Thank you, thank you, Father, for Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for bleeding. Thank you, Spirit, for leading me. One more time, thank you, Father, for 
Jesus for bleeding. Thank you, Spirit. Yes. Well, well, thank you, Father, for Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for bleeding. Thank you, Spirit, for bleeding. Yes. your Bibles. Be praised. Oh, praise Him. Oh, praise Him. Hallelujah. Right there at home. Praise Him. Praise Him. Jesus. Blessed Savior. Be praised. 
let's do it again everybody praise him praise him praise him oh praise him praise him Jesus blessed Savior he's worthy to be praised come on from the rising from the rising of the sun uh, until the glory hallelujah he's worthy jesus is worthy. oh yes come on sing it oh he's worthy to Oh, praise him. Come on. Oh, praise him. That's a church. Come on. Praise him. Oh, yes. Praise him. Jesus, blessed Savior. Oh, he's worthy. Worthy to from the rising of the sun from the rising of the sun until the going down of the same I know he's worth yes Jesus is worth Sing it, he's worthy to be praised. Yes, praise him. Oh, praise him. Hallelujah. Lift those hands, praise him. Oh, praise him. I know that he is worthy to be praised. Come on, just lift those hands. Oh, praise him. No matter what you're going through. Oh, praise him. May not be well in your body, but try to lift your hands and praise him. Jesus, blessed Savior, I know he's worthy, worthy to be praised. In that prison, like now, praise him. Oh, praise him. Praise him. Praise him, Jesus, blessed Savior. Oh, he's worthy to be. Come on, everybody, let's do it one more time. Praise him. Mm -hmm. Praise him. Hallelujah. Praise God, I thank you for my children. Thank you for my family. Thank you for this great church. Thank you for life, health, and strength. Thank you for being clothed and in my right mind. Who is worthy to be praised? I thank you that I'm in the house. Oh, praise Him. Oh, thank you that you've kept me a hundred and three days of COVID-19. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. I praise you. I praise you.
praise I thank you for the mothers of this church I thank you for the deacons the elders of this house the steps that we have to take after this I thank you for safe protesting I thank you for policies and laws being changed I praise you I praise you Jesus blessed say I know worthy to be me thank you for food in my house Oh, praise him. I need to praise him. Just take some time, everybody, and praise him. Ooh, praise him. Take a moment right now and say, Jesus, blessed say, oh, he's worthy. more time praise him oh praise him for safe travel Kathy praise him oh praise him oh Jesus blessed say come on sing it from your heart he worthy be praised. Lift your hands and say it from the rising of the sun ah, until the going down of the same sun. Ah, oh, he's worthy. Ah, Jesus. Praise him. Hey. Oh, pray. Those of you that are grieving, come on, pray. Why don't you praise him? Jesus, blessed Savior, he's worthy to be praised. Can you clap your hands all over this place? Ooh, this is my Bible. It is God's word to me, and I believe what it says. And who it says I am, that's who I am. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That's what it says, and that's who I am, because I believe what it says. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's what this Bible says, and I believe what it says. So today I'm ready to receive the next impartation of the word of God. And with my heart I shall believe the word of God. And where I have need of change, I shall be changed by the word of God. And when I have heard, received, and then believed, and then applied the word of God, I'll never be the same again. Who in Jesus' name, amen. Join me in Romans chapter number six once again. Our pastor has brought that to our attention, the reading, and she's lifted it up. And I want us to see it again, if you would, for the first time. Amen. Hallelujah. And as we are now in the fourth Sunday, I believe, of Pentecost, I want to move us towards some teachings, some more teachings on the Holy Spirit in this season hallelujah thank God for his word amen verse 11 likewise you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord 
Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in its lust. And do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. And for sin, it shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under law, but under grace. What then shall we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? Certainly not. Do you not know that to whom you present yourself slaves to obey, that that's the one slave you will obey? whether it is sin leading to death or obedience leading to righteousness. Hmm. But God be thanked that though you were slaves of sin, yet you obeyed from the heart the form of doctrine or gospel to which you now have been delivered. And having been set free from sin, you are now slaves of righteousness. I speak in human terms because of the weakness of your flesh, or well, just if you were presented your members as slaves of uncleanliness and of lawlessness leading to more lawlessness. So now present your members as slaves of righteousness for holiness. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. What fruit did you have then in the things of which you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now, having been set free from sin and having become slaves of God, you have your fruit unto holiness and in the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And if you would slide over to Galatians chapter number 5. And we'll revisit this. We won't get it all in today, but we're going to visit it throughout the next few times that we are together. Galatians chapter number five. Galatians chapter number five, <clears throat> verse 16. I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit lusts against the flesh and these are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish but if you are led by the spirit then you are not under the law now the works of the flesh are evident adultery fornication uncleanliness lewdness idolatry sorcery hatred contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like of which I tell you beforehand, just as I've told you in times past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the spirit, then let us also walk in the spirit. Let's read that together, verse 25. If we live, uh-huh. And one translation says, let us be in step with the Spirit. Is that right? Let us walk in the Spirit. Let us be in step with the Spirit. And let us not fulfill what? Y'all quiet. If we walk in the Spirit, if we keep in step with the Spirit, the results is that we will not fulfill the lust of our flesh. 
You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I, I want to talk about the sanctifier. The sanctifier. The Holy Ghost in this season, I believe, is doing many things. He gave it to me these last 40 days that he was a comforter. But as I have been seeking the Lord, I am compelled to go another 40 days. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> and uh, we're going to be focusing on the ministry of the Holy Spirit as a sanctifier. If you get something to write with and something to write on, I want to give you a few things that we probably already know about the Holy Spirit. But let's revisit that, if you will, in terms of the ministry of the Holy Spirit and some of the activity of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Holy Spirit, we know he initiates salvation. He initiates salvation. It is by the Spirit of God that we are drawn to Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit, praise God. If you all turn that off for me. The Holy Spirit draws us to Christ and then he baptizes us into the body. He draws us to Christ Jesus. He initiates salvation. And he baptizes us into the body. That is a work of the Holy Spirit. That's not something that necessarily you are always aware of. But once you repent and confess Christ as your Savior, he initiates salvation, draws you to Christ, and then instantly he baptizes us into the body. Then the Holy Spirit is responsible for indwelling us, indwelling us. He indwells us as the confidence or as the earnest of our salvation. He indwells us. He is the co-signer, if you would, of our salvation. So that if you ever default in your loan, if you ever default, the co-signer is responsible. And that is very powerful in banking, and we know we have co-signed, and we have had co-signers. And basically what that says is that you are subject to default on the loan. But if you default, we have a guarantor. And the guarantor now has the responsibility to take up the loan. And they measure the co-signer the same way they measure those who could be the principal, but the co-signer is given the responsibility to catch the loan if it goes into a rearage. Think about that in terms of the Holy Spirit. When people say that you can lose your salvation, understand that we are all subject to default in our salvation and our walk with God. And the Lord knows that, so he gave us a co-signer. He gave us a guarantor. He gave us someone that would be able to, he gave us someone that would be able to pay for the loan in case we defaulted. Ain't that good? I say, ain't that good news? Praise God. Hallelujah. So then he secures our salvation. That's good news. Then the Holy Spirit is given to us to convict us when we do wrong. Convict us of sin. Convict us of righteousness. Holy Spirit then produces repentance in our lives. He convicts and he leads us to repentance. Holy Spirit regenerates us or regenes us. He gives us the new code of Christ. The DNA of our lives is changed by the working of the Holy Spirit. Then the Holy Spirit justifies us. He causes us to stand before God as if we have never sinned. The Holy Spirit illuminates us when it comes to the word. Since he breathed upon it and caused men to write, then he knows the deep things. He knows the hidden mysteries of the word of God. So he illuminates. Holy Spirit guides us. He is a leader and a guide. 
The Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. And I've been really pounding this. He keeps us in the truth. His role and his assignment is to take us to truth and keep us, to hold us, to restrain us. It's the Holy Spirit that, that speaks to us and says, now you know that's not truth. The Holy Spirit says to us, stay in the truth. Stay in the truth. You know that's not the truth. Whether it's a action, whether it's a word, whether it's a habit, an appetite, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. And his role is to keep us in the truth. Somebody should say amen to that. The Holy Spirit helps us with our submission to Christ. Holy Spirit helps us with our submission to Christ. Here's something. The Holy Spirit gifts us. Gifts. G-I-F-T-S. He gifts us. It's the Holy Spirit's gifts and giftings that are in our lives. Not just the nine gifts of the Spirit, but also the gifts of wisdom and discernment, administration, helps. He gifts us. He gives us the gifts that we can help him to build the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit guarantees our eternal life. It is his responsibility to lead us from earth to glory and to present us to our Savior. Hallelujah. Without fault, without blame, without wrinkles or such things. Amen. The Holy Spirit strengthens us when we are weak. He strengthens us. He is a comforter. He strengthens us. He is our helper. When we cannot help ourselves, he helps us. Holy Spirit gives us a new heart. Thank you, Jesus. I said the Holy Spirit gives us a new heart. Hallelujah. The Bible says that he will give us a new heart and put his spirit in us. And the spirit of God keeps working in us and we will obey his commandments. It is not us that obey. It's the Holy Spirit in us that helps us to obey the word of God. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to say amen. I'm teaching really good. Amen. And then the Holy Spirit intercedes for us. He prays for us according to the will of God. He prays for us while you are sleeping. Yes, there are times when we participate in prayer. But know this, you're not the only person praying for you. The Holy Spirit is praying for you. Holy Spirit is praying in the earth realm. Jesus is praying in the heavenly realm. Somebody ought to say, yes, God. How many of you need all of those prayers? Let me wave my two hands. Come on, wave. I need, I need the Holy Ghost to pray in earth, and I need Jesus to pray in the heavens. So the Holy Spirit makes intercession between earth and heaven. Then between heaven and the Father, Jesus is interceding. So the Holy Spirit takes up whatever it is that we need from heaven and presents it to Jesus. And Jesus presents it to the Father. The Father then answers the Son. The Son gives it to the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit brings it to us. Isn't that delicious? Isn't that wonderful? Praise God. Jesus said he will take from what is mine and he will make it known unto you. So understand that this wonderful intercessory prayer ministry of the Holy Spirit is going on at all times. Watch this with groanings that you and I cannot utter. So he's praying when we're not praying. Praise God. Have you ever been in a situation where you couldn't pray? I have. I've been in some spots. I've been in some tight spaces where I couldn't really pray. Come on now. But the Holy Spirit is already there. He was there before I arrived. And he prays for us according to the will of God. The Holy Spirit helps you with your spiritual walk. 
Holy Spirit helps you to grow up in the Lord. Holy Spirit helps you with maturity. It is the Spirit of God that allows us to hear the word and quicken the word in us. It's the Holy Spirit that allows certain situations and circumstances to come in our lives. And he causes us to grow from those events. He called, That's the Holy Spirit. Because if it was not for the Holy Spirit, you and I could get bitter. You and I could get evil. You and I could get mean. Come on, somebody. But it's the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit that helps us to walk through the valleys of the shadows of death. It's the Holy Spirit that helps us to, to get over a bankruptcy or get over a foreclosure or get over a marriage or a divorce or get over uh, various losses of job or people. It's the Holy Spirit that walks with us. It's the Holy Spirit. You would think you would totally collapse and die and not be able to get through it. But the Holy Spirit said, no, 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 I got you. I got you. And you're going to be all right. Amen. On the other side of this, you're going to be just fine. Somebody ought to clap your hands for the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah. And it's the Holy Spirit that on the other side of the test, it's the Holy Spirit that gives you the testimony. That's the Holy Spirit that causes us. It says the eyes of our understanding will be enlightened. That we would know the hope of his calling and the exceeding greatness of his promises. And that we would know the power, the power to those that believe. And that it is the same power that he used when he raised Jesus from the dead. That's the same power that he has given us. He has given us the same Holy Spirit that he gave Jesus. The same Holy Spirit that was upon Jesus Christ. Is upon our lives. Amen. Are y'all hearing that? That is great news. Praise God. But here is something that is not often talked about. And that is the Holy Spirit as a sanctifier. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit as a sanctifier. Uh, Y'all not going to say nothing. You say, well, why do I need the Holy Spirit as a sanctifier? Let me give you three things that you are going to understand why you and I need the help of the Holy Spirit to sanctify us. Number one, God's standards are impossible. God's standards are impossible. None of us can attain God's standards. They are impossible for any human being to attain. God's standards are so high. God's standards are so beyond our human ability that we need help to be holy. Okay, nobody going to say nothing. He says, be ye holy. As I am holy. Come on now. That sounds good when we're preaching it. It sounds good when we're teaching it. But the reality is, come on, somebody say it's impossible. Say, say, say to be, all right, I can be holy. But to be holy as God is holy. <laughs> I, I can create my own brand of holiness. And many denominations and many churches and religions have done that. They have, re they have created a brand of holiness. They have created laws and rules and regulations that would for them satisfy the responsibility of you being holy. So if you do as we say do, then you're holy. If you wear what we tell you to wear, then you're holy. Everything that we say to you is sin. If you believe that and you, you avoid it, then you're holy. But that's a brand of holiness. Anybody ever been down the generic aisle? 
Y'all not going to say nothing to me. Y'all, anybody ever been down the aisle that's, that don't have no real labels on the stuff? Come on, I, I very seldom visit that aisle. I'd just rather pay the extra money for the real raisin brands. I don't know what's in that box. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Let me just save my money and get me the real Frosted Flakes with Tony the Tiger on it. Because I know what's in that box. Y'all not saying nothing. I know that cornflakes are good. But I know frosted flakes are great. And I, 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 I see the little fruit loops in the bag, but it don't have no label on it. If I'm just going to eat some fruit loops, I want the, the real fruit loops. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Come on, stay with me. Anybody ever been down the generic aisle? Come on, in the dollar store? I know y'all go. Come on. And it's all black and white and crow because they got a whole aisle with a brand. A, pro, <laughs> a brand that, that is uh, almost. Almost. And that's what religion tries to do, is to give you a brand of holiness. But that brand is doable in the flesh. That brand is doable by human effort. And you don't need the Holy Ghost to help you. You just got to say, all right, I ain't going to never go to the show no more. I'm not going to wear red lipstick no more. I'm just not going to, you know. You can do that, but as, that's human effort. And that does not sanctify you. But when God says, be ye holy as I am holy. Well, now you know it's not about a show because I don't think God has a problem with going to the show. I don't think spirit, I don't know it, I don't know. I don't know about God, but in the show, I don't know. I, it can't be lipstick. It can't be jewelry. Because everything around God is jeweled. But that's a, that's a brand. But God says, be ye holy as I am holy. So God is spirit. God is working on truth in your with man and let me just tell you that that is impossible for you and I to obtain Ooh, come on somebody somebody say it's impossible the second reason that we need the sanctifier is that our foe is a formidable foe you say well who is our foe your flesh <laughs> Ooh, it ain't the devil. The devil ain't your foe. The foe that we all face that Paul spoke of in Romans 6 and in, and in Galatians 5, he didn't say the works of the devil are. He didn't say, he didn't say, oh God, y'all not going to hear me today. He, he said mortify the deeds of your body. Don't kill the devil. So our foe is formidable. Somebody say why? Because he lives in you. Your foe is in us. Our foe is in us. Your foe is in you. You sleep with your foe. You eat with your foe. You travel with your foe. You are never any place without your flesh. Nobody going to say nothing to me now. We like to point out everything about the spirit world and never acknowledge the fact that the real foe, the real fight that you and I are in is the fight of the flesh. That wars against the spirit. 
That's the fight. Hallelujah. And even when we got saved, the flesh is still present. And it, it seeks to incarcerate your new life in Christ. It seeks to, to nullify, if you will, the power of Christ in our lives. And every day and every moment of every day, the flesh, your flesh, my flesh, is always wrestling against the will of God in our lives. Y'all ain't going to say nothing. Come on, somebody. I need you to hear what I'm saying. And we cannot ever be perfected by our human strength. So we need help. Oh, hallelujah. And this is very seldom taught in terms of the Holy Spirit will help you with your flesh. <laughs> oh, yes, I want to cast out devils. Oh, yes, I want to raise the dead. How about the Holy Ghost help you with your flesh? Just help you with your attitude. Just help you with your mindset. Just help you with your social life, your religious life, your moral life, your love life. How about that? <laughs> your financial life. The Holy Spirit has been given to us by God to help us with this foe called flesh. What is the flesh? The flesh is a combination of the soul and the body. The soul, the will, the intents, your mind, your desires, your appetites, your lusts, your passions. That's your soul. And it uses your body as its mechanism. It uses your body as its soldier. The soul, come on now, tries to regulate the soldier of your body. And cause your body to obey it in all of its lusts and passions. And all of its drives. And we always got drives. Come on, somebody. Uh, we got drives. We all got drives. And so the soul man, the soulish man, until it is converted by the word of God, will constantly, always be lusting against God's spirit. It will always resist. It will always fight God's spirit in your life. So we need help. We need, we need help, folks. And I, I know whenever I preach messages like this, y'all love it when I preach good messages to make you feel better. But I need us to hear these kinds of messages. I can't be a shepherd. I can't be a good pastor. And I don't help you with your flesh. You don't like it when I, when I have to pound on something. You don't like certain messages I preach. I understand that. I, I realize that some messages are G, you know, general acceptance. I, I know some messages are R, right? they give a little tight. But I know some messages are X. Like, excuse me. <laughs> and that might be one of those today. Because in Pentecost, wouldn't it be awful that we exit Pentecost with power, but still living in the flesh? Still, still bound by the flesh. And it's totally possible. It is possible to be greatly used by God. Come on now. And still have a fight, a formidable fight with your own flesh. We don't like it. We don't like it. When the Holy Spirit says, I, I was slicing some tomatoes last night. Uh, for some reason, we were talking about tomatoes in a family, and I was missing some tomatoes with Shannon and April for some reason. I don't know why we were talking about tomatoes. And anyway, I just desired to have some tomatoes. So my last outing to the store, I got me some nice tomatoes, and they got perfect. And so last night, I was slicing. My intent was to eat that whole tomato. Made me a little salad and made me a little scrambled eggs on the side. I was going to slice some tomatoes. And uh, I sliced one. Ooh, they were so pretty and red. Two. Perfect. You know how they, you know, be green. They're kind of hard at first. And now they're juicy and red. Yeah, Taba. And then I sliced three. And the Holy Spirit said, that's enough.
got the perfectly scrambled. This is my dinner. Scrambled eggs and cheese and onions. And sliced tomatoes. Come on, y'all ain't got to say nothing. A little salad. Amen. Because I'm still doing what I'm doing. Amen. Shando. For the rest of my life. <laughs> Until Jesus comes. Because I, I, I have to discipline this flesh. And so I'm slicing the tomato, and it was just funny to me because all day I've been working on a research paper and studying and doing everything. And, and it was just funny that I knew that the Holy Spirit was, I was going to deal with being sanctified and sanctification. And as I'm slicing the tomatoes, beautiful slices, just so pretty, and, and, and the Holy Spirit said, that's enough, three slices. Now, I wanted that whole tomato. It was probably another three good slices in it. And I, I laughed, I was tickled as I put the, as I put the tomatoes mm, on my plate. And I said, God, even in this, you are sanctifying us. The Holy Spirit wants to know, can I restrain you? If I can't restrain you in tomatoes, then I know I can't restrain you in a hamburger. And if I can't restrain you in a hamburger, come on, then I know I can't restrain you in the french fries. I ain't saying nothing. I'm going someplace. Just stay with me. I'm where you like me now, but I'm going where you don't like me. Then I know I, I can't restrain you in the way you respond to things. I, I know if, if I can't check you right here, then that means that there are other areas in your life that you don't allow me to sanctify. And I was tickled. I was literally laughing as I took the tomatoes and put it on my little saucer. And I was just tickled because I was like, Wow. I really wanted that whole tomato. But I was tickled at the fact that the Holy Spirit didn't want me to have the whole tomato. Now, we don't recognize that as sanctification. But that's what it is. It's the simple things that he's trying to sanctify our flesh from. It's not always adultery and fornication. And some of us get off there. Oh, that ain't ever been my problem. That ain't that. But can you eat three slices of this tomato? I know you're not trying to, to steal nobody's man. I know you're not trying to take somebody's wife. Come on. I know you ain't trying to take no woman to no hotel. I know that. You belong to a Holy Ghost Cathedral. Come on now. But can you just eat three slices of this tomato? Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. So, somebody say sanctify her. Come on now, come on now, come on now. And, and, and it was already late and I'd been just kind of up all day and working this, this particular paper. And so I'm just already there and just, oh, uh, as I look up and it's 11, I haven't had anything to eat. And, and so I said, what can I eat? So I'm going to have this, oh, that tomato looking so good. Mm. Mm, child, I'm going to put me some ranch dressing and some seasoning. I got some of that Mexican seasoning. I'm going to slice me a little avocado. Woo, child, I'm having a little scrambled eggs and cheese. Got a few little onions. And I'm going to have a, woo, child, that tomato going to be good. And it ain't no sin in the tomato. But it's sin in my flesh. He ain't, the sanctifier is not always working on just the more obvious moral issues of our life. But he sanctifies our appetites. Our appetites. Sometimes it's not always that we are lusting after something that's immoral or we're lusting after something that's illegal. Sometimes we're just lusting. 
We just have a lust that is resident in our life. And it will attach itself to anything, even a tomato. Can you recognize the lust of your flesh? I, 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 I was sitting in my office all day, sitting in that chair. I've come to realize that I need a different kind of chair. So I went online and I said, I need a chair with a footrest because as you sit all day and the blood goes down to your, to your ankles now, I began to see. I said, oh, no, 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 wait, 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 Lucy the devil. So I went online. I found the perfect chair. I thought it was perfect, perfect color. It's got a footrest, leans back. I said, oh, yeah, that's what I need since I'm in this chair all day starting at 6 in the morning. And uh, I clicked. It says, add to cart. I put it in the cart. Holy Spirit said don't buy that. So I came out of Amazon and went over to Wayfair. And there it was again. I said, mm. Then I went. He said, I said, don't buy it. <laughs> All right, so here I am with my smart self. Come on, somebody. And there it is, cheaper at Home Depot. And Home Depot said, we will deliver it. We will assemble it and deliver it. I said, Shondo, I put it in the cart. I got three carts. Holy Spirit said, don't buy it. I said, how about I just get up out of this chair and leave this office? He said, how about it? See, we don't, we don't recognize that that's sanctification. That little situation right there with the chair. See, because the lust is not about the chair. It's the lust of the flesh. It's the lust of the flesh that is your foe. The foe that we fight is the fight of flesh. And it will attach itself to anything. It will attach itself to a, a thing. It will attach itself to money. It will attach itself to a position. It will attach itself to a person. It will attach itself to a religion. It will your flesh is the, is the enemy. And it will attach itself to a pork chop. It will attach itself to a tomato. Y'all ain't saying nothing. See, this stuff ain't innocent, folks. This, this ain't innocent. It will attach itself to M&M's. It will attach itself to anything. It will attach itself to CVS. It will attach itself to the hair salon. It will attach itself. It doesn't matter what the object is. The object ain't your problem. The object is your flesh. And your flesh will attach itself, fall in love with, lust after, desire anything. You ain't got a problem with M&Ms. You got a problem with your flesh. And when you feed your flesh, it'll ask for Snickers. It ain't Snickers. It's the flesh. And once you feed it a Snickers bar, it asks for Oreos. So you know you ain't got a problem with him and hims. You ain't got a come on. You ain't got a problem with Oreos. You got a problem with the flesh that needs to be sanctified. of the Holy Spirit is to sanctify us from our own flesh. Oh God, I'm teaching too good. I'm teaching good. I'm teaching good. Y'all ain't say nothing. You can go, go, go to, the, to the doctor and, and, and have weight loss surgery and still gain weight. How many times have I seen it? 
How many people I know got a sleeve? How many people I know got a band? I was one of them. How many people got this? And I was still gaining weight because the, the problem, come on here, it wasn't my stomach. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Come on, if I put a sleeve in and shrink your stomach, if I put a band on and shrink it so you can't eat much, let me tell you, you'll find a way around it uh, because the flesh lost after the spirit. Uh, you'll spend $10,000 uh, and your investment won't mean nothing to you because the flesh needs to be sanctified. You'll put a $100,000 worth of dental work in your mouth and rot every tooth out because you won't brush them at night and brush them in the morning. Your flesh is rebellious. Your flesh hates God. Your flesh is uh, is haughty and prideful and arrogant against God. It's hostile against God. And because you don't die, you still know it's wrong. Because the Holy Spirit is a convictor. You know you ate too much. You know you drank too much. You know you did too much. My flesh tell me sometimes you're doing too much. <laughs> you is too extra today. I want you to get off that Facebook because you're being extra today. See, sanctify me. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. Let me speak in tongues. Let me preach. Let me minister. But don't sanctify me. Let the gifts of the Spirit operate in my life. Let the word of knowledge, the word of faith, let, let, the, word, let, the, word, let the prophecy, let, let me be used of God. But don't sanctify my flesh. You've been mean 90 years. You're 91. Come on, somebody. You got a great intercessory prayer ministry, but, but, but the flesh, the flesh is a formidable foe. Number three, number three reasons why you need the Holy Spirit, the relentless operation of Satan. The relentless operation of Satan. So number one, God's standards are impossible. Number two, our foe is formidable. Number three, the relentless operation of Satan. Let me just say this. Many of you will never ever fight Satan directly. Because the lack of maturation or maturity with you just conquering your own anger or your own flesh. See, you got to understand something. And God just kind of spoke to me that when the spirit of the Lord helps us, he helps us with our personal life, our religious life, our social life, and our moral life. And many of us have made conquered, have conquered one area or two. But you know the area in which the Holy Spirit needs to sanctify you. Hallelujah. Come on now. And because of the relentless operation of Satan that's going on around us in the heavenlies and in the high places, the way that the Holy Spirit will help us is that if we could master this flesh by the power of the Holy Ghost, you can't do it on your own because in, in, in dwelling within you is your own self. And wherever you go, that's where you are. But the masterful plan of the devil is to always keep us looping around. It's always around the enemy is always around trying to keep us in that same fleshly loop that cycle now you may not be able to fight the devil but what he does the way he gets you is that he'll allow you to step out of something but he'll keep working with you until you step back in it
He'll allow you to say, okay, you're free now. You're free. Come on out. Yeah, and you be like, yeah, yeah. Ooh, I finally broke my addiction to Oreos. I finally broke my addiction to lying. I finally broke my addiction, my addiction to pornography. I haven't looked at pornography for seven months. I, I haven't looked at another woman or another man. I haven't done it for five years. I haven't picked up a cigarette in 20 years. But the relentless operation of Satan, y'all ain't going to hear me. Can I teach a little bit today? I know you don't like these kind of messages. You like them G message, but this is the X message today, and it's for you. Praise God. But the relentless operation of Satan, though he doesn't have to fight you directly, is that he keeps you in the cycle of your flesh. He don't care nothing about you being free for 20 years. He know you ain't free. And he knows that it could be any event that could trigger you to go back. He knows what it takes for you to be triggered, to operate the same way you operated at 15, even though now you're 55. And you may not have acted out for maybe 20 years. But because of the relentless operation of Satan, so that he can always accuse you before God, because he is the accuser of the brethren, you don't care nothing about you being saved. Care nothing about you having been baptized in the Holy Ghost. Don't care nothing about you speaking tongues. What he knows is that if he pushes that button, he don't have to fight you. All he got to do is touch that flesh. And once he triggers whatever your trigger is, you may be able to withstand it the first time, the second time, the fifth time, the tenth time. But sooner or later, because he's relentless, he don't have nothing but time. So we need a sanctifier. We need the Holy Spirit to be more to us than just dynamite power in ministry. We need the Holy Ghost to help us with our flesh. In order for the Spirit of God to help us with our flesh, here we go. You're going to have to have a deep relationship with Scripture. Because the Holy Spirit, he wants to help you with the flesh. But you've got to put some Scripture in your heart. Because it is the engrafted word of God that helps to save the soul. You have got to have a deep, convicting, consistent relationship with scripture. And the reason that the Holy Spirit has such pushback from us, the reason that the Holy Spirit has such resistance from the people of God, is because we don't have no scripture in us. The Holy Spirit works in agreement with the word of God. You see, when you begin to read the scriptures and you begin to see what pleases God and you begin to see what doesn't please God, then you say, oh, wait a minute. So when the Holy Spirit brings that to your remembrance, you say, I read that in the word. Now, Holy Spirit, help me, sanctify me in this area. When we don't have a deep, rich conviction intimate relationship with scripture it's not that the Holy Spirit cannot do the job but you make it harder sanctify them through thy word for thy word is truth you can be sanctified by the word and then when the Holy Spirit comes and the Holy Spirit brings conviction then you are standing between the conviction of the word and the conviction of the spirit. Baby, you on your way to freedom. You want to be free. You don't just want to be saved. You want to be saved and free. You don't just want to be saved. You want to, just, you don't, you want to be sanctified. Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. Ooh, 
hallelujah. Uh, you don't hear a lot of saints testify anymore. I'm saved and sanctified and filled with that of the mighty burning precious Holy Spirit and that with a mighty burning. You don't hear that much because now we're saved, but we don't claim to be sanctified. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. We saved, but I don't claim to be sanctified. I, I'm saved, but I know I'm not sanctified. But that's why the Holy Spirit in this Pentecost is not just working on you speaking in tongues, uh, but he's working on your sanctification. Can I get some amens in this house? Can I get some hallelujahs in this house? You want to be able to stand flat-footed and say, I'm saved. I'm sanctified and I'm filled with the precious Holy Ghost and that with a mighty burning fire. See, I, and I'm not talking about the generic brand of sanctification. I'm talking about the biblical brand of sanctification. Be ye holy as I am holy. I want to be saved. I want to be sanctified. And filled with the precious Holy Ghost. I want to be saved and sanctified and filled with the precious Holy Ghost. I want to be saved. I want to be sanctified. Paul says you, you got to reckon yourself as dead, folks. You... The Holy Ghost, I'm telling you, if it's down to a tomato, the Holy Ghost won't let you have everything you want. I ain't going to say nothing to me. The Holy, Ghost will, the Holy Ghost won't let you have everything you want. Oh, my God. The Holy Spirit, come on now. He won't let you even, I'm telling you, I'm slicing this tomato, and it was a beautiful, red, juicy tomato right at the right time to be eaten. Ain't no calories in the tomato. Ain't no carbs in the tomato. Why can't I have the whole tomato? Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Uh, it won't make me fat. It's not going to bring me out of ketosis. It's, I'm, I'm not. What is the problem? What is the problem, God? Uh, it's just a tomato. Uh, I want this tomato with these scrambled eggs uh, and cheese with onions. Uh, I can't see no sin in it. Uh, I can't see nothing wrong with it. Uh, it don't have no calories. Uh, when I evaluate it through my own lenses, uh, I don't see nothing wrong with it. It. But at the third slice, the Holy Ghost said, that's enough. Because I want you to know that just because your flesh lusts for it, that I don't want you to have everything your flesh lusts for. You may not see nothing wrong. Your name may not see no calories in it because you evaluate it through your own eyes. But I want to know, can you obey me with a tomato? Can you submit your flesh even when you don't see danger in it? I want to be saved. Paul said, you Galatians, you started in the spirit, and now you're trying to be sanctified by the works of the flesh. And the Judaizers have come in and told you that you can't experience or you can't have the expression of God unless you get circumcised and follow the rituals of the law. But you started in the spirit, and now you're going to go back to the law. You started in the spirit. Galatians 3 said, I birthed you in the spirit. And now because I haven't been there for 14 years or so, now these Judaizers, these fake missionaries, these generic brand preachers have gotten in there and now they're trying to convince you that in order for you to experience the fullness of God, that you got to come through a Jewish code of circumcision. He said, who has bewitched you?
He said, I started you in the Holy Ghost. I expect you to end in the Holy Ghost. He said, don't you know that the spirit lusts against the flesh? And the flesh lusts against the spirit. Don't you understand that I betrothed you to one bridegroom I didn't give you to multiple folks? And now all of a sudden, you've lost the sound of my voice in your ear. I modeled before you righteousness. I modeled before you holiness. And now you want to be sanctified by the works of the flesh. Circumcision won't sanctify you. Being baptized won't sanctify you. Y'all ain't going to like this. Taking communion won't sanctify you. Preaching the gospel won't sanctify you. Leading worship don't sanctify you. There's only one agent in the earth that can sanctify us. And he is God, the Holy Spirit. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody clap your hands and say, I want to be saved. I want to be sanctified. Come on, say it loud. I want to be saved. And I want to be sanctified. I want to put your flesh on notice that this week you will hear more acutely aware of the Spirit of God. Some of you have a pattern of rebellion. You have a lifestyle of rebelling against God. But this week you're going to hear the Holy Spirit. This week, the Holy Spirit is going to be louder than ever. This week, conviction is going to be not hidden under the noise of your music or the noise of your busyness. That this week, the Holy Spirit is going to begin his work that he started. When you got saved, he's going to be sanctifying us. I don't just want to be saved, folks. I don't just want you to be saved. I want you to be sanctified. One of the things that I was thinking of this week, and I, I'm busier now than when I was traveling. I'm just everywhere, just sitting in that one chair. And I said to myself, I said, self, when I go on these different spaces virtually, don't let me embarrass the cathedral. I never want to be in a place where you all are embarrassed. I never want to be in any place where I misrepresent you or where you look at me and you say, oh, my God, Bishop, oh, Lord, oh, Jesus, why, why she, oh, Lord. I never want to be in a place where the people of God who are in my care are embarrassed or ashamed. And I've tried with everything in me to make sure that when I do anything, I'm always thinking about you all. I'm always considering how will this impact the people in my care. I already know I'm going to please God, but how is this going to impact? Because if others like it and the cathedral doesn't like it, that's what matters to me. I always want to represent this house well. I always want you to look and say, that's my bishop. That's my pastor. That's my apostle. That's my mom. I never want you to be ashamed of my behavior or my appearance. There are places I want to go, but I don't go because it would embarrass this house. There are some things I'm grown enough to do, but I don't do them because I know that the outcome will bring reproach on you, the people of God. I want to expect the same thing from you that you expect from me. Stand on your feet, everybody. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God a praise. Hallelujah. Give God a praise. Come on, give him a praise. 
if you can expect that from me, then I should be able to expect that from you. And the only way that that can be done is by the sanctifying power of the Holy Ghost. I want you to lift your hands and just say after me, Holy Spirit, deal with me in every area of my life. My flesh is a formidable foe. But today, I yield to your sanctifying power to help me submit my flesh to you. Now keep those hands up and think about it for just a moment. Think about it for just a moment. Those of you that are watching, those of you that are part of the cathedral, those of you that are here in the sanctuary, I want you to acknowledge that one space, that area. Is it your personal life? Is it your social life? Is it your moral life? Is it your financial life? Is it your sexual life? Is it your religious life? What part of your human experience Desire the Holy Spirit to sanctify first. I want you to be honest right there where you stand, where you, right there, there where you are. Because he will sanctify you. Give him permission this morning. Is it ambition? Is it lust? Is it a drive? What is it? Is it fear? Is it anxiety? Is it rage? Is it anger? Is it unforgiveness? What is it? Are you holding a grudge? Do you have something in your heart that you still can't just get rid of? Is it the way you handle your finances? Is it the way you handle your physical body? What area do you desire first? the Holy Spirit to invade. He's a sanctifier. Is it your mouth? You talk too much. Do you, do you speak on things you shouldn't speak on? Do you have opinions that get in the way of wisdom? It doesn't have to be adultery and fornication. It doesn't have to be gambling because casinos are closed. It doesn't have to be any of that. It could be the simple fourth slice of a tomato. Holy Spirit, deal with me. Holy Spirit, slip those hands up. Deal with me. Take what's wrong and make it right. Spirit deal throughout this night. Holy Spirit, deal with me. authority until all in my life becomes yours yours till all in my life becomes yours. Yes, Lord. Sing it, people of God. Holy Spirit, deal with me. Is it overeating? Holy Spirit, is it overconsumption on any other level? Deal with me. Come on. You can take what's wrong 
And you can make it right, oh God. Spirit, throughout this night, yes, Holy Spirit, deal with me, yes, God. I give you, is it temper? Authority, your grudges until law. Yes, God. In my life, yes, Holy Spirit, becomes yours. Thank you, Father. I want it to be yours until law. In my life, is it my pride becomes Let's do it again. Come on. On the on this on the surface, let it deal with you deeply. Spirit, deal with me. Come on. Holy Spirit. Deal with me. Take what's wrong and make it. carry anger the night is it lust is it flesh is it sexual sin is it immorality deal with me hey uh, Lord I give you yes sir all authority hallelujah until all is it fear in my life to be yours <laughs> until all that's in my life becomes yours yes sir is it how I deal with money oh holy spirit mm. deal with me am I lazy Holy Spirit, do I have problems with completion? Deal with me. I can start, but I don't finish. Take what's wrong. <laughs> you can make it right. Yes, sir. Spirit, deal throughout this night. Holy Spirit, yes, sir. Is it childhood hurts, trauma? I give you authority until law, yes, sir. That's in my life becomes yours under your control. Till long, yes, sir. It's in my life becomes yours under your management and under your control. Until long, it's in my life, yes, sir. Becomes yours, yours. Help me with my tongue. Help me with my thoughts. Yours on until Lord, yes, sir. That's in my life. Becomes yours. Any habit, any thought. Yours on until Lord, yes, sir. That's in my life. Becomes.
Father, we thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit in our lives. That he is our sanctifier, our sanctifying agent. He's our helper. He's our guide. He's our illuminator. He seals us and secures us in our salvation. But as we prepare to leave this place, I pray now that this week he will sanctify us down to every area of our lives. I pray that the eyes of our understanding will be enlightened. I pray that our ears will be open. I pray that our hearts will be receptive and our spirit will be sensitive. Help me to hear this week like I've never heard before. And just because I've been in a situation a long time, it doesn't mean that you can't sanctify me from it now. Until all in my life, yes, sir, becomes yours. So, Father, I thank you. I thank you. I give you praise for those that are watching. I give you praise for those that are here in the sanctuary. I give you honor and glory, Lord. That we will know you as a sanctifier. Now you won't stop us. You won't intrude. You won't make us. And some of us, that's how we are wired. That if you put a hard stop, then I'll, I, I can do it. But God, the Holy Spirit, you're so much gentler than that. So I need to be able to be aware of your presence. And I need to be able to be exceedingly sensitive to the inward witness and to the nudgings and the nuances of the Holy Spirit this week. It could just be the next fork of food that you're going to stop me. It could just be the next telephone call. It could just be the next sentence. It could be something big, but it could be something really small. But until all. Until all. Come on. <laughs> until all. Until all <laughs> Ooh. Until all Could be shopping oh, 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 oh. Until all It could be just Something real little That I keep Just Not giving in on But I'm Father, as Kathy gets ready to leave and move into a new space in her life, I thank you, God, that she will meet you along the way. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you have already gone ahead of her and you have prepared for her a place in righteousness. A place of significance and a place of impact. I pray God that her spirit will yield to the Holy Spirit in every area of her life. I pray that any wall that needs to come down will come down and any gate that needs to go up will go up. I pray that this is not a season of exploration or a season of casting off restraint but it's a season of maturity and development and sensitivity to your voice as never before. I sanction that the right people will be around her and not those that will cater to any whim that's in her mind, but those that will have wisdom for her, that the right man, the right woman, the right young person will have 
the right word of God in their mouth for her. I pray, God, that you will surround her with the saints. That you will surround her with godly people. Maybe they're not churchified, but they're godly. I pray that every open door that you have ordained for her will continue to be open and every door that you don't want for her will be closed. I pray that this will be a great season. These next five years will be an amazing time and season for her to find your will for her life. And so now let the blood of Jesus be traction to those tires on that airplane and in those cars let the spirit of the Lord be with her and the great host of heaven be behind her and be her rear guard and protect her from all harm and violence protect her now from witches, warlocks and mobile demons protect her now from anyone that has manipulative ideas about her or for her cause her to hear you readily and steadily cause her to know you as never before give her hunger and appetite for your word like she's never had before thank you for the new job thank you for the new place in school thank you for all of the new assignments but let the old God the God of her father the God of Leon Glover I told her how to the God of her Father the Holy Ghost of her Daddy the gospel that Leon preached that it surround her and hold her safe For he has left a legacy for her. He has left the gospel, the cross, the upper room, and the blood for Candy. And I thank you that the spirit of her father will rest upon her and she will glorify the Lord Jesus Christ and the beautiful legacy that Leon has left. She is well, she is safe, and she is saved. And we give you praise that every time we see her, she'll have a testimony of how good God has been. Keep her from her own folly. Protect her from her own flesh. Protect her from the craziness that, that comes in all of us and comes to torment us. Protect her from that. Let Leon be everywhere she is. Let her meet someone named Leon. Let her run into her father. And let her know as a sign that he is with her. And you are with her. And I thank you for she will not be a casualty she will not be a loss but she's on the winning side and I thank you for it I give you praise and now the peace of God the love of Jesus Christ and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit will be with us together until we meet again in Jesus mighty name amen can you give God a praise? Hallelujah. Come on, give him a praise. Hallelujah. Until all. Come on, keep praising him. In my life. Come on, praise him. Becomes yours. I want it to be yours. Until all. Yes, sir. In my life.
hallelujah the peace of the Lord is with you join us on Tuesday nights on our call in line join us on Saturday's Zoom praise God for our children at 930 amen dial in on Tuesday nights for our Bible study that number is 1605 313-5156 and the access code is 870-570-pound amen and we're going to put it in the chat if you're tuning in late you have a time and opportunity to sow a seed please sow a seed to paypal dot me forward slash HG Cathedral and if that's just too crazy go ahead and cash app it dollar sign HGFG Cathedral that's Holy Ghost for Gospel hey I'm Bishop Coletta Vaughn join me Monday through Fridays at 7 a.m. for another 40 days on the power of the Holy Ghost and his sanctifying message those of you that are watching please share it start a watch party amen and get other people and when we open to your comfort level please come and visit us until then the peace of the Lord is with you come on and give God a praise everybody hallelujah give him a praise so let the church say amen god bless y'all have a super day have a super week let the church come on say amen god has spoken don't forget to take your communion so let the church with you say amen God bless you. Have a good time this week. Amen. Enjoy the holidays. Come on. Come on. So let the church, come on, say amen. Oh, yes. So let the church say amen. If you haven't given, do it now. God has spoken. So let the church. Come on, come on, come on, amen. Amazing because it goes as far as Ghana, Jamaica, Honduras. Social media has been a very great blessing because we've been able to market it on social media. But I was amazed that the first time I did a Facebook Live this year, 11,000 women said yes. 11,000 women said yes. So I believe that there's millions out there that just need somebody to help them. Just need someone to encourage them. That's what I'm called to do. I know it. Some of them are nurses, doctors, educators. They're in all spheres of society. But yet, they've heard the voice of God to go tell them.